I wanted to give an idea of what to expect with Piano Picnic, why I'm different to other educators and what the ethos is behind that. Teach pianists to embrace creativity through their curiosity. That's it in a nutshell. I want people to be curious about different things to do with music and playing the piano and to indulge in that curiosity and, be and become a more creative pianist as a result of that. If you've done piano lessons before and it just didn't sit right with you or you weren't, the learning method wasn't suitable for you or you just hated turning up somewhere every week, then Piano Picnic is definitely for you. We're trying to develop independent musicians. So that's my whole goal, is musicians that can explore things on their own because of their own understanding of music. Meaning they can learn by ear, they can improvise, they can riff, they can play from a lead sheet, they can compose. Uh, all these skills basically making you an independent musician, meaning you're not relying on someone making a tutorial for a song in order for you to do it, or someone making sheet music for a song in order for you to do it. You just have the, your own musical freedom, meaning that you can do stuff yourself. Traditional is teaching you to read sheet music and play exactly what's on the page, right? The creative method of learning is learning by rote, by ear, and by, and by understanding theory to understand the way music works so that you can play off the page. So, traditional teaches you to play on page. Creative teaches you to play off page. When a baby is born and they grow up, they will learn to listen, to feel, and understand language before they speak it, right? They take on things like tone of voice, your expression, the situation in which you're saying something, all these ways that we learn what language is and um, and understand and then they make some cute noises <laughs> and then eventually they can speak the language, right, and make up their own sentences and express themselves through the words that they say. It's the same for music. If we think of it like that, in terms of learning music, we don't, it doesn't make any sense to read and write before we understand tone, expression, we can get the idea of what music is meaning. Um, we are opening our hearts, our minds, and our ears to listen, to feel, to understand music, then to speak our own sentences with that music, right? so that we can express ourselves in this musical language. Initially it was my sort of tagline was learn piano bite by bite. That was before we thought of play it like you mean it, which is obviously my favorite. It was in reference to this idea of snackable content and I did some research into an idea called micro training. And that was, it's science backed, they've tested it a bunch with, um, both with education and also with actually physical training as well for athletes. I do a little bit each day in order to get more progress rather than a marathon session every now and then. And the idea behind that is that when you do a little bit and then you, the next day you build on that and the next day you build on that, you not only are you doing learning something new each day and building on the previous, you start to sort of get gain interest, right? As you sort of build and build and build and build and build. When you do one session in a marathon session and then you don't do anything for ages and by marathon session of course I mean practice or lessons of learning you are going to lose a lot of what you learned in terms of memory but also in terms of in, in mechanically in your in your body and your fingers and so when you next have to practice you have to cover that ground again. This idea of having small small two minute lessons in our piano courses mean that you can do daily practice or at least a daily lesson and come back to the piano when you can. All our piano picnic courses are made up of on average two minute lessons so it's always easy for you to get through. There's no excuse to not do one each day. People ask me what grade should I be for this course? I'm grade eight and so I don't know if this is going to be appropriate for me because I've done all the way up to grade 8 classical piano or 
someone's only, you know, at grade one, they've just started out, they've done a couple of traditional lessons and they're like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. The thing with Piano Picnic is that I've done away with grades, not just because I hate rules, <laughs> but also uh, because we're talking a bit about exploring your curiosity. So the courses are grouped in terms of topic, not in terms of level. We've got a, a course on learning by ear, we've got a course on playing from a lead sheet, we've got a course on improvising, you know. They're, they're grouped in topics and skills rather than this level, this level, this level. And what that uh, enables you to do is to follow your curiosity. If learning by ear is really calling to you right now and that's your desire, you can go and do that and that course will take you from beginner stage to being able to the basics of playing songs by ear. And the thing is is that you can be grade 8 piano traditionally and still need to start from the beginning in terms of creative skills because we're just not taught those uh, those creative skills and to listen properly and to interpret and all those things with even being at such an advanced level of playing from the page. This is why the Piano Picnic curriculum is based on topics, not grades. Grades are kind of irrelevant in the Piano Picnic universe. <music> Because of the topic based approach that I was just talking about before, each course on each topic covers some of the basic foundational theory that you need to know in order to go and to prepare you for that learning that creative skill. And that's my whole thing is no more, no less in terms of theory, right? You learn what you need to know for that topic and I don't overbear you with too much theory. But because of this, if you have done some traditional piano lessons, it is likely that some of the material in the beginning of these courses may be familiar to you. Don't panic, okay? This is to make sure that this course is achievable for everyone. There's usually a few lessons at the beginning that some people might find easy or repeating uh, stuff they already know. Just think of that as a refresher mindful of the fact that some people ha haven't got the experience that you have and that's why that those chapters are there. Think of it as a refresher and be sort of open-minded about going through it again. I do encourage you to go through things that even if they sound familiar, to do them anyway, do the activities, go through the motions because I do have some people coming to me saying that even though they thought they knew a concept in theory, once they put it into action, it really actually clicks into place a bit more. So give it a go. Maybe you might find just a smidgen of something new in a topic that you thought was totally familiar to you. Oh, Malcolm, how wonderful. He says, I've just done super basics and found out something I was never taught in three years of lessons. Thank you so much, Malcolm. That's wonderful. You've just totally proved what I was just trying to say. come to me and uh, they're like I've watched the video but I still it's not um, sinking and I don't have the, the skill that I'm supposed to have that's in the title of the course right uh, improvising I've watched all the videos and I still can't improvise I like to reference the movie The Matrix have you guys seen The Matrix and there's a scene where uh, they, they run to a helicopter and Neo says to Trinity do you know how to fly a helicopter and she's like it's going help that with the computer right now I do and she's just downloaded the information to be able to know how to fly a helicopter. Thank you. <laughs> I know, I know. But we can't, unfortunately that hasn't been discovered yet. We can't do a plug into the back of our head and just download skills. We can't just stream the videos and binge and <laughs> hope that we will understand the concepts. The theory has to be understood and the skills have to be practiced and applied. Clarity comes from engagement. So the theory will always sink in better, the understanding, even if it seems really like really weird, as soon as you start doing it, it's going to start making sense when you're applying it. Get it under your fingers is the best thing I can say. I can show you what to do, but you really have to go and do it if you really want to gain those skills properly. What Piano Picnic is also about is 
we do not fade away. I don't want people to buy the course, to do a couple lessons, and then just fade into the background. We celebrate. So every time you get through a module or a video lesson or through the end of a course or you finish a coaching replay or you actually just do a whole week where you manage to actually sit at the piano every day, we celebrate. Tell us. I want to celebrate with you. That's what we do because we need to get those little dopamine hits of feeling good about ourselves and feeling good about the small progresses we made and reminding ourselves that this is what we want. This is why we do this rather than not celebrating and thinking, oh, it's not that big of a deal, and then just, you will just fade away. So we need to keep that vibe up That and I'm here for you. I got vibe for days. I want to invite you to come and get started as a creative pianist. This is all the stuff that we've talked about today, is all the benefit of learning with Piano Pitnik, and uh, you can see how with the motivation, with the easy two minute lessons that you can do daily, with the fact that you're going to put it into action and not just stream it, not just binge watch, and all these other reasons why Piano Picnic is, seems like it's a great choice for you. All you have to do is go to pianopitnic.com forward slash creative, you can sign up. Malcolm says he's in, let's do it.